Hi, um, welcome to this uh, video. Uh, this is a video about uh, buying your first car. I went uh, through this process about uh, five years ago and I've learned uh, a fair deal uh, in the past four to five years. So I just thought I would share my thoughts with, uh, with the audience who are in the same state or with the parents who have kids um, who would like to buy their first car. So let's get started. So this used to be the traditional way of uh, buying a car. You know, uh, back in the days, you would buy a car that you like, uh, a car or, uh, or the car, doesn't matter. And then you road tax it, you insure it, and you start driving. Uh, if it's a new car, it's, it's fine. I mean, um, if something goes wrong, uh, you can take it back to the, uh, uh, to the seller and get it fixed. Um, but if if it is a if it is a used car, um, um, I don't know how it how, how it used to work back in the days. Uh, but right now, this wouldn't necessarily work. You know, you could buy the car from eBay or one of the online portals. Uh, you could get the car delivered at your doorstep, or you could buy it on Country. Um, you know, and you could get fooled, as in you know there could be a problem with the car uh, which you can't see on the day of purchase or there could be a problem with uh, with it in the long term so all these issues are supposed to be kept in mind when you buy your first car so let's have a look at uh, things that you need to keep in mind so as you know we live in the age of internet so we really need to harness the power of World Wide Web um, a lot of the cars that we uh, generally buy are usually used by uh, tens of thousands of people out there so and uh, the days of Facebook and uh, and Twitter and uh, blogs and all these things people would have expressed their views and uh, and there are uh, um, websites where you can actually find about the cards well in advance before you commit to them commit to buy them um, so Necessarily, you you need to do your due diligence. You need to work out the cumulative costs involved, not just the upfront cost. The cost the car the car could cost you about I don't know a thousand or two thousand pounds when you purchase it. But what really matters is how much would it uh, uh, you know cost you to run it and cost you to maintain it over the period of time. You know, two to three years or five years or whatever. And, and, and depending on taking all these things into mind, you need to make a wise decision um, and you need to have your <laughs> back covered. And when I say that, you need to do certain things like warranties and uh, certain uh, things in insurance to make sure, you know, if something goes wrong, God forbidden, that, you know, you're not, you don't get into deep trouble. Um, and uh, having said all this, you know, if you if you're too cautious, you might end up losing a lot of money. For example, if you simply think buying a used car is, 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 a, is too much of a hassle and if you end up buying a new car, it would probably end up cost costing you more in the long run. You know, used cars tend to be up and over 10,000 pounds, well in the UK, and, uh, depending on where you are, even if you are in the States, probably cost you about $15,000 upwards. Um, so it's, it's, it's about getting the balance right, not spending too much at the same time not being uh, you know not not being taken uh, taken away by the by the instincts so these are the lists uh, list list of things that you need to consider um, before buying it affordability well that necessarily means what's your upper limit fix your limit and then go into the market simply don't go to the market thinking that you would buy a car um, that you might like because that would swing your choices all the way from the really old cars which are 10 years and older which cost you probably 500 to 1000 pounds all the way till the with almost new cars which are two to three year old or even the new ones which are about 15 16 sometimes even 30 40 thousand pounds so know your limit know your uh, spending limit and uh, you need to keep uh, keep in mind the costs involved as well. So you buy a new car, probably there are less maintenance and reliability costs and issues with it. Uh, at the same, but but you're putting more price for the car 
itself. Uh, on the other hand, what to buy, um, where to buy, so would you purchase it from a, a garage uh, down the road or garage locally or a mechanic locally or would you purchase it online and, and what do you need to check and how to insure the car and how to minimize the running costs and other miscellaneous stuff involved. Well, to begin with, affordability. So, what's your upper limit? So, make sure you limit um, your expenditure or your or your um, purchase um, by fixing to a number. If it is three thousand pounds, make sure you don't cross it. Maybe ten percent is fine, you know. Crossing three thousand by ten percent uh, is three thousand three hundred pounds. But don't go beyond that. Don't go beyond you know, a 4,000 pounds or something, just stick to 3,000 and play around it. I mean, if, if there is a car which is slightly more expensive, you could buy it. And then, new or used. Well, if you're after a new car, you're probably not even watching this video because you've made up your mind, you know, you have, you have a car of your dream and you probably want to purchase it. Fine, but there are some topics that are even relevant for the new cars in this uh, video. Um, one thing that you need to keep in mind when you want to purchase a new car is you purchase a new car today and tomorrow it depreciates by 20% and that's things like tax and other things that you pay on the day. So you buy that car in a month or two for some reason, I don't know what the reason would be, uh, you would lose that 20%. So instead why don't you buy a, a, a five month or thousand, uh, sorry, a, a one year old car. Um, which is which once again sometimes is sold by the um, the dealers themselves so that's a different topic we'll cover that later if, if there is more interest to that and we'll we'll see why the dealers sell so-called um, almost new cars um, if someone requests that video um, are you a brand fan uh, are you a fan of ford are you a fan of gm are you a fan of volkswagen group are you a fan of bmw toyota honda well, there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. Back in the days when, you know, um, the ownership of these cars were across several nations before the, the age of globalization, a lot of this so-called branding mattered. And right now, most of them don't because uh, all these manufacture, man manufacturers use is computer-aided design. And depending on the the range, you know, economy, luxury, super luxury, they they use almost uh, similar tools, and they and some, some sometimes uh, surprisingly, they don't manufacture the parts themselves, but they just source it from um, you know uh, third party. So you know your seats are not probably probably not made by let's say Volkswagen or BMW themselves, but made by a, a third party. So. Volkswagen, BMW, buy the seats from them, just fit them. The core technology might be uh, proprietary, but not necessarily the, the entire uh, parts in the system. So this has changed over the period of time. And right now what happens is, you know, if you stick to a certain range of uh, the car, um, the make doesn't really matter, you know, unless you're really, you know, <laughs> brand fanatic. Um, so, other thing you need to keep in mind is, um, you know, once again, back in the days, you had American cars, you had German-made cars, you had the, you had the British-made, and you had the Japanese-made, and once again, all these manufacturers have now got their uh, manufacturing and design facilities across the world. They no longer are uh, a so-called a, a nation's entity. So, um, I know a friend who works locally for a Ford. For, for, for Ford company, I know a friend who works for Jaguar. I have a, I used to I used to live in a place where they made the Hondas, Swindon. So it really doesn't matter. Um, um, once again, if you're really specific about the brand, you know I'm not here to <laughs> convince you. Go for it. But if you want to buy a, 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 a generic good car that would take you from A to B, the brand shouldn't really matter. Uh, and then the cost involved. Um, well upfront um, the cost of the car so the cost of the car would probably make the most of it so that would probably make 70 to 80 percent of of it and and then you're looking at uh, warranty if you buy it from a dealer or a local garage they might provide you a warranty from 
depending on three months to three years. And if you're buying a new car, I see that uh, Kias and Toyotas are, uh, I think in Hyundai, they come with five to seven year warranty. That's amazing. So th that really shows how reliable they are, at least on the paper. Um, and then the road tax. So buying itself is not enough to drive the car. You need to pay the road tax. And then um, you need to insure it to make it roadworthy. And then uh, it's ideal that you also get the breakdown coverage done because you know you're driving from your home to your work or you know some holiday. If the tire gets punctured or something comes out of the uh, engine and uh, you know anything could happen, especially with the used cars. So if you have it uh, have the breakdown coverage done, you would probably save a lot of time and effort. Um, and money as well uh, and then the running costs are obviously so the fuel you fill into the car the engine oil and all these things uh, they are all uh, variant upon the on the on the car and the and the model of the car and uh, you know if you go for super luxury uh, the people who buy super luxury cars for, for them fuel efficiency may not be a big concern but for some someone like me uh, my first car was a Skoda Fabia uh, 2002 make and fuel efficiency was a big concern of mine I think it was giving me about uh, well the advertised uh, fuel efficiency was uh, 52 miles per gallon on, on highway and uh, 40 miles per gallon in, in the city um, despite being a 2002 car it was very fuel efficient uh, I think on, a, on an average it gave me 42 to 44 miles per gallon and then repairs so repairs and maintenance they are generally related to how reliable the cars are. So you wouldn't know when you buy the car uh, w how reliable it would be but just by looking at it. This is exactly where uh, the, the World Wide Web and all these websites make sense. So that will be covered in detail in a bit. And what to buy? Um, well, when you want to buy a car uh, by limiting your expenditure let's say you're capping it at five thousand pounds the things that really take up um you know uh, your your budget are the four primary things i as shown on this slide uh, the warranty is optional uh, by the way and it is constant uh, depending on how old the car is uh, for a given age of a car the warranties tend to be warranty tends to be constant it doesn't make uh, what make it is um, the breakdown coverage also seems to be constant uh, from my experience um, there are three variants that really um, you know uh, decide the cost of your car so once again the cost of the car um, the car might be a lot more cheaper let's say a used car which is a 10 year old I don't know Ford Focus could cost you 600 pounds that doesn't necessarily mean uh, the road tax is less and the insurance is less you know they're not proportional so on the flip side uh, 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 an expensive car as in a, a relatively expensive a, a two or three thousand pound car doesn't necessarily cost uh, that much more in road tax and insurance um, so this is uh, th these are three variants that decided so ideally um, go for a car um, that is reliable and, uh, and and that gives you higher fuel efficiency and uh, that sort of um, uh, affects the road tax and insurance generally the road tax is affected by the emissions emitted by the car so if you go for I don't know something like an electric car the road tax is zero surprisingly zero but electric car cars tend to be very expensive you see that that's affecting your factor one which is the cost of the car uh, electric cars could be expensive to insure them for reasons uh, known to the market um, at the same time um, if you buy um, I don't know a, a diesel car uh, a diesel cars tend to have less fuel efficiency as, as in sorry more fuel efficiency that reflects in the uh, road tax as well so road tax of a diesel car might be less compared to its equivalent petrol car um, and the insurance uh, could be affected by the reliability so how do we find these things before we buy one so 
the cost of the car. So when I want to buy a car, I tend to use Auto Trader. So you put your um, um, you put your uh, postcode. Well, that's um, uh, that's optional. I mean, you could search it UK wide or your wherever country wide, and then you put your uh, make. Let's say you want uh, like like let's let's stick to Skoda Fabia because that was my first car. Uh, so you want to buy a Skoda Fa Fabia uh, and your price is so much. So let's quickly search it and see what 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 Auto Trader uh, shows us. So my postcode is, for example, S115NB. The distance from my postcode that I would like to search is, let's say, I don't know, 50 miles maybe. And uh, 15115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115115
because they are the proven cars. As you can see, you also see the higher number here. You know, there are about 250,000 diesels and 250,000 petrols. But, but things that fit into this selection were, you know, in my criteria, uh, there are only a certain amount of, um, I don't know, by fuel is probably when you have both LPG as in or CNG along with your uh, primary fuel which is uh, petrol and then electrics are just electrics um, hybrid have a, a way of charging a battery um, and that's a different topic altogether uh, I'm not a, I'm not an automotive expert and I wouldn't go into that uh, at least in this video so yeah most of the times it's it's between uh, uh, diesel and petrol um, according to the conventional wisdom from my friends um, the diesel cars that were made before 2010 had quite a few issues and um, they tend to tell me any diesel car that was made around 2010 or after 2010 are as good as uh, petrol. Um, I come from a country um, in India, uh, come from India where uh, people tend to say uh, if it is a petrol car you can leave it un um, undriven for I don't know six months or one year you come back and you can start it and it would start no starting issues and anything or anything on the other hand a, a diesel car um, people tell me have quite a few issues um, uh, once again this is conventional wisdom I could be wrong all this would be proven is by just checking uh, you know their reliability and other things which would, we would cover later and then engine sizes right um, you can have all the way from one liter to some crazy 6.5 liter I don't I have never come across a car with 6.5 liter engine so this would sort of determine um, the, the 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 drive type you know how racy it is and how more fuel efficient it is and all these factors the more uh, the higher generally the higher the engine size uh, which is uh, measured in liters uh, the less the fuel, fuel efficiency is uh, acceleration once again and then gearbox uh, would you like to go for an automatic manual semi-automatic and you know things like that and um, the other things doors right so if you're a family uh, person you probably need a, a five door car which is four doors plus a boot uh, I don't know what a six door is <laughs> um, anyway and then you have four doors where um, well and then you have uh, I don't know what a four door is probably the one anyway generally the three doors are the ones without uh, doors for the rear seat so you have two doors one for the driver and one for the passenger next to the driver and then one you have a, a boot boot uh, door uh, so you know those cars could be a bit of a hassle when you have kids where you need to fit their uh, booster seats and all that come out of them but if you are a, uh, a bachelor uh, if, you, if, you, if you are a if you are a, a, a lone driver, you know, these things don't really matter. Uh, two doors, I don't know what they are. Uh, I think two doors probably mean three doors and four doors probably mean five doors. Um, seats, once again, uh, would you like a two-seater, three, um, five-seater, six-seater, it all depends on uh, your family your needs and uh, your needs. And then insurance group. I know this is quite good. Um, I'm glad Auto Trader shows it here, but we can also there is a website that, that would actually tell us what exactly uh, is the insurance group of a given car. So once again, the the the, the lesser the insurance group, the least it would it would be to to insure it. And insurance could be really daunting uh, for for new drivers, anywhere from 500 pounds to 5,000 pounds. Yes, I have heard people who have actually given a quotation of 5,000 pounds to insure a car for a year, just one year. Uh, annual tax is road tax. Uh, once again, you can use this uh, to assess how much this car would cost you to, you know, to, to ride for a year. And so, like I said, road tax is based on the fuel uh, emissions, uh, the uh, emissions from the uh, car. Um, so, for example, you could buy a 300 pound car I know people who buy them from gum trees and all that but if you end up spending 300 pounds uh, for annual tax it doesn't make any sense instead you could probably spend a thousand pounds on 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 a car on a used car and spend i don't know 150 on 
annual tax because when you purchase your car the upfront cost of a car is constant let's say put it down to thousand pounds but the annual tax is a recurring cost it would come back to you every year so it's ideal that you limit that especially if you want to own this car for uh, a good amount of time three to five years or something um, anyway let's go back to the presentation so that's how auto trader could help you and then um, you have uh, a website that would actually help you kind of determine what uh, what uh, how much it would cost you to uh, you know to to well, what road tax band it is in so if i click on it and if i can quickly hover through to it select the used one uh, and select skoda and then i select my fabia and then my first car was uh, petrol and it was 1.4 liter uh, which is also shown as um, 1390cc um, and it was if I am not wrong um, I think it was this one yeah and the registration was uh, definitely this uh, it was a 2002 so you see, as you can see here, my car would have, well, I don't own this car anymore, but if one were to buy this car today, um, it would cost 285 to, uh, to for the road tax. So that, that's a recurring cost comes uh, once every year, and you could also pay it uh, bi-yearly, you know, pay for six months and then do it for six months. But that's the general idea. So it's a band G, so higher the band, higher the road tax. The next thing is um, insurance. Um, this is something that a lot of people um, tend to ignore. Um, so, you know, let's let let let, let me put my once again score the details in, and you get a good idea. Fabia. So mine was uh, two thousand. Uh, Fabia 16 V yeah that looks like mine I mean, it doesn't matter this is just an example you see now that's a insurance group of 10 right and one could think um, you know you could probably fit a, I don't know a BMW if you're a BMW fan into the same insurance and you, you some people assume insurance co uh, co cost is constant it is not let me quickly show you what it what I mean with that uh, let me put BMW there and let me quickly select uh, I don't know much about the BMWs uh, okay okay let me put let's say that one so it's a sports car right some people are crazy about getting one of those <laughs> so if I find the group of it look at that now the group insurance group has gone up from 10 to 43 so probably that that's four times um, you know uh, in ratio so it on paper it would probably cost you the same to insure it so assuming uh, a, a Skoda Fabio costs you I don't know 600 pounds to insure it uh, your, your, your BMW Z4 Sport convertible cost you the uh, cost you four times that which is 3,000 pounds 2,500 3,000 pounds so really make a sensible decision when you buy it you know and, and, and by the way insurance is a recurring a recurring cost you have to insure your car every year so you could purchase a car for thousand pounds but if it is in a higher insurance group it makes no sense because you would pay so much over the period of time um reliability so reliability is another thing that you need to keep in mind so let's quickly look at that as well so uh skoda fabia check now uh, you see now that tells us something um, so people who have the peop this rating is given on um, based on people reporting it to uh, reporting it to this website and this website uh, owners doing the market research and finding it from um, local garages and uh, other parties uh, so this kind of tells you how much it would cost so and 37 is a very good uh, in uh, good good uh, uh, rating you know and it also shows on this uh, 
skill that uh, Fabio would is, is a good one. Um, let me quickly go for a previous one, right? You see, even the older Fabios are pretty decent. Um, and uh, you can go through this, you know. Um, these links would be provided uh, in the description. You can easily go through them. Um, yeah, so higher the reliability, lower the cost of insurance, ideally, and the lower cost for you to run and maintain it. Um, now that you've decided uh, what to buy, because you have limited uh, your options based on the previously mentioned uh, factors, and now you really need to know where to buy it. You could purchase it online. Uh, I know people who purchase uh, cards online from the website that I already showed you, which is Auto Trader. Um, people buy them from local garages. You know, you just walk into the garage, you see a card, you like it, you could buy it from there. People, I know people who buy from auctions. Um, this is, uh, you know. If I start talking about the auction purchase method of buying a car, that would open a, a, a can of worms on its own. Uh, that's a different topic altogether. I'm not a topic expert, so we can talk about it later. Uh, I know people, um, so th these are the three main ways of buying a car. Uh, and, and no matter what or how you want to buy it, valuation is very important. So you need to really know how much you're paying for the car. You shouldn't be overpaying for it. So the three websites that I generally go to, and they are uh, whatcar.com, autotrader.co.au, that has already been shown to you, and Honest John. Um, so this guy is quite good, and he actually, you know, I don't know if it is a person or, or if it is a company, but they then uh, the website is quite good. You can post your questions, and they'll get back to you in two to three days and tell you how uh, good or bad a car is and how much it would roughly cost. And then what to check, right? So a lot of people miss uh, a couple of points in the, from here. Test drive, yes, of course. On the day uh, of purchase of of, uh, of the car, uh, you know, you really need to test drive it. Maybe you can't do this when uh, you buy it from an auction or when you buy things online. But if you definitely buy it from a garage uh, or a dealer, you can do this. Uh, so you can actually see the state of the car on that day you know you wouldn't know its history so that's when the MOT history comes into the place uh, so if I actually um, if you actually have the registration number of the car you can actually check its MOT history and it's quite easy uh, nowadays thanks to the uh, the British government and DVSA um, so you go to this website uh, you start by just entering the a registration number and that's my registration number of my uh, previously owned uh, Skoda Fabia and the make is Skoda. Uh, I think this is just a, a check um, uh, for, you know for genuine people checking it not some random computer loading the website. So once you do that um, uh, I'll not go through the details but you can go through my car's MOT history it would tell you things like uh, what have failed over the period of time. You know, the car is what, uh, uh, more than 10 year old now. And when you're buying an old car like that, you really need to know what issues it has been, it has got and uh, and uh, if, if and how, how early they were fixed. And, and, and the other thing is, uh, you can actually check from MOT history is, you can actually check if people have actually f um, uh, clogged the odometer. So, one factor that would affect the cost of a car is the odometer reading. So people tend to clog the odometer. So you could have a 10 year old car that has done 200,000 miles, but someone, uh, a mechanic could actually trick you by uh, um, changing the reading on the odometer. But that could be recorded in the MOT history. So let's say he changed it in the 11th year, the 9th year od or 10th year odometer reading, if, it if that is more than the 11th year MOT odometer reading, you know that the guy has done something really wrong. So from my uh, car, you can actually see it's been pretty, pretty reliable. So it has done 10, 11, 20, 30. I purchased it uh, when it was 30, and then it has done 56. And um, and you know, um, I think I I didn't sell it. In fact, I gave it to a friend when it when it is uh, 75,000. So roughly 75 so uh, that is about it uh, from this website and then you have HPI check so if you're buying from uh, a dealer 
this is the best way to check uh, the car's history as in the, if you think uh, let's say if you're buying from a local garage the car could be stolen from someone right so you, hpa check tells all that so any uh, such uh, financial and criminal I issues related to the car would be logged uh, into this record and hpi would help you find it and uh, the pricing is not uh, too much. I mean, the pri price of uh, finding a, a HPA check for a car is roughly about 10 to 20 pounds, and they vary depending on how many cars you would like to verify. And finally, if you're buying a, a kind of a high end car, which is about more than three to five thousand pounds more uh, or plus, uh, I tend to prefer using this service from RAC or. Uh, a the um, automobile association so they you can uh, uh, schedule uh, uh, an appointment with them and uh, they'll come to the purchase uh, point and they check uh, the, there are three uh, um, offerings that they do uh, one is basic one is comprehensive one, one is advanced so depending on what you want to check your car you can get it done once again if you are buying a, a thousand pound car it doesn't make sense spending 239 on it maybe a basic 99 check is fine and apart from other checks that you do but if you're buying a, a 10,000 pound used car this is probably something that you it's worth spending on it um, and how to ensure it uh, okay um, now that you've already chosen a car uh, that you already know what its insurance group is like uh, now it's about choosing the cheapest insurer um, you can use websites like compare the market or confused um, um, I'll not go into the details but you know you can go into yeah there you go <laughs> you can go into car insurance and uh, you could put your details in um, and it would tell you how the comparison between all the insurance providers uh, they, they, there are standard insurers where they simply take your details, your car details, your expected mileage and give you a quotation. And then there are people who fit a telematics box. It is nothing but a, uh, it's, it's almost like a, a phone that's fit into your car, but it's not a feature phone or anything. It's connected uh, to the insurance provider's uh, computer. So it tells uh, the, the insurer how fast you're driving and how bad you're driving or what times of the day you're driving and how quickly do you brake and if you take brakes during long drives and all that all this information so depending on that um, they tend to give you uh, less than um, standard prices because if you're a good driver you're rewarded if you're not you're, you're not um, one thing you need to keep in mind is the cheapest way of insuring a car is definitely not the best way to do it because the cheapest insurer probably doesn't have good reputation in the market. They could uh, give you a lot of hassle when it comes to claiming something um, um, when, when something goes wrong, like an accident or something. So also look at the insurer ratings uh, on several other websites. Um, and how do you minimize uh, the, uh, the running costs? Always keep checking your dashboard. Your dashboard is your uh, <laughs> crystal ball most of the times. If something goes wrong, the dashboard has a warning light on it and most of the cars uh, listen to your car. Please listen to your car. A dashboard is not the only thing. Also listen to the awkward sounds that are coming out of your car. Uh, monitor uh, fumes uh, that are abnormal. And um, if you're a car expert, look into them. If you have a friend who is a car expert, let him have a look. If not, go to a local garage. Um, at the same time, if the car is uh, not drivable at all, if you are covered by breakdown coverage, you know, they can come over and check your uh, car. And then um, for minor things, you know, uh, you can do a DIY. So once you find some uh, minor or major, any issue, attend to it. Uh, if it is, let's say, a bulb fuses uh, from your headlight. If it is something that you, th you, you think you can fix it, uh, watch a YouTube video, let's say if it's a Skoda Fabia bulb change, search for those keywords um, and you can you can find a lot of uh, nice people doing these videos out there and you can use those tricks to fix this small issue. Um, if it is a more specific issue, let's say some EPC warning that has come up on your 
uh, dashboard and you can't find a YouTube video for that or a, or a blog about that. Uh, there are forums uh, for various makes and uh, models. Go uh, ask uh, a question in that forum. A lot of nice people once again out there who will help you. Um, service the car. So the uh, the the more the well the more uh, the better you maintain the car, the less surprises you get. So uh, a surprise could be very nasty. You know, sometimes it would completely destroy the car's engine and you can't drive it. So listen to your car, watch for any uh, things that come up on your dashboard and, 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 and uh, service your car yourself if you're able to do that. If not, give it to a, uh, a local garage. Well, other stuff. Uh, the DIY tips, you can uh, watch the videos on YouTube, but you can buy the parts from uh, places like Halfords, Eurocar Parts and eBay. I tend to like Eurocar Parts uh, because you can reserve them online, you can collect them locally and uh, they're pretty good with the pricing um, and then other miscellaneous supplies um, well uh, for things like uh, um, wiper fluid and uh, you know other miscellaneous things you can buy them from amazon i like amazon because it's easy to return uh, things uh, and things are quite uh, even things like engine oil uh, you can actually get them from amazon so compare the cost of these products before you buy before you buy them um, is it time to uh, f time for your car? Uh, is time for your car up? Well, this is a million dollar, well, not a million dollar question, but a few hundred, a few thousands, a f thousand pound question, right? So, the thing is, if your car is worth 500 pounds, and if, if, if then it, if, 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 if you need to repair it with 400 pounds, think about it. Would it is it really? Uh, worth repairing it with 400 pounds for a car that is worth 500 pounds or maybe if it is a car that is worth 10,000 pounds spending uh, a fraction uh, not a fraction but less than 10 to 5 percent of the cost of the, the value of the car in repairs is fine but if you buy a, a car that is worth 3,000 pounds and if if somehow something goes wrong hopefully nothing goes as uh, um, things don't go wrong after you've considered all the previous um, aforementioned uh, factors um, but if something goes wrong, um, you know, once again, choose it wisely. Would you repair or replace an engine that would cost you, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 pounds, or would you buy a car that probably costs you the same? Anyway, there are a lot of things that I would have probably missed uh, because uh, this is the first time I'm making such a video. So please comment, please um, please uh, uh, do participate in discussion below uh, and uh, most of all drive safe be a safe driver um, being a safe driver you save a lot of lives <laughs> thank you